Now, Italian national TT champs was on this week, and obviously most people thought, including myself, it was going to be a people Ghana destruction. Now, it was a pretty hard course. It had a 600-meter climb at 11%, 1.5K at 8%. Here's Mattia Catania, who finished third on the day. Um, super, super strong ride from the boy. Very nice position, to be honest. Um, this is one of the steep climbs. Um, get a lot of in and out the saddle. Some aggressive and technical descents re are required. Um, but yeah, you can see here, pretty steep. And Matteo Sobrero, who's been flying in the... Uh, he was flying in Tour of Slovenia, looking pretty good in the Giro as well. Um, he finished third on the final day TT at the Giro, um, and he won it. And we're going to go through his power day at, at the end as well, because it's pretty interesting. And look at maybe why Ghana didn't win. Um, but here you can see position from Catania is good. He's just a strong man all around. I think he also got a couple top tens in the in the Giro uh, TTs. And here's Matteo Sobrero, number five, looking really, really smooth and dull position, to be honest. Um, he's got a real sort of tucked tucked head sort of half high hands but obviously within UCI limit which is like 10 centimeters above the base part which is classic but he was pretty aggressive on the downhills here you can see this is sort of uh, false flat downhill um, and he was really taking absolute like no prisoners just launching every corner possible uh, which is what we love to see um, but it was a really good technical course um, hilly up and down I guess that's why it didn't suit Ganner as much you know um, on a on a six percent climb, uh, in, sorry, he might do alright, but on an eleven percent climb, it's going to be tough. Um, but you can see here, he's absolutely flying downhill, Matteo Sobrero, um, in and out of the bars. Here, the lads like slow down, son, and he's like no, or his boy. Um, and I guess, you know, he he clearly was a shock win for a lot of people, including myself, but not sort of completely unheard of. Eduardo Affini finished second. He was super strong in the opening day TT um, at the Giro. Finished second, which is pretty decent um, from him. Uh, it was hilly as well, so it was, it was good that he got around. Here's his position, the classic head down position um, on the Cervelo. Look at the spacing between the disc and the TT bike. Absolutely zero space for the win, which is decent. Um, believe they're on the aero coach front wheel. You can see him getting out the saddle again here. Just It was a lot of uh, in and out. And here's the big boy himself, the world champion, an Italian national champion, Pippo Ganna. Uh, and he is starting off there, obviously the last one to go off as he's the reigning champ. Here again is Affini, he's got the infamous laser helmet which Roglic, well, obviously didn't do too well in, and is flying off his head. Here's Matteo Sobrero, the front on shot as he comes to finish, looking very narrow, looking very tight, and he obviously set the fastest time. Here's Ganna up the, one of the steep climbs, I believe this is the early on climb, which is 1.5k at 8%. And you can see here, it's a real struggle for Ganna up these climbs, like obviously he is really, really good climber. Um, but 85 kilos or so, 82 kilos, I think he is still going to be pretty hard um, to beat some of these guys up. Climbs for, for reference, Sobrero did about 6 watts per kilo for the whole 55 minutes. Um, and because it was hilly, that would mean Ganna's doing that 480, which is a lot. And I'm not even sure big boy Ganna could do that on this sort of course. Um, so in that sense, maybe it wasn't too crazy. Um, but yeah, Ganna's position still pretty good. He's just, I love the way he looks so comfortable on a TT bike. He just... Looks like he's been born and raised on that since he's about three years old. Um, but anyway, now we're going to go over to the Strava analysis and see how Sobrero won. All right, so this is the Strava file. Um, now, 45 kilometers long, 58 minutes, so basically an hour threshold, 539 meters of climbing, as I said, pretty hilly. Normalized at 365, which at 64 kilos is not like absolutely bonkers, uh, but still obviously very strong nonetheless. Um, but maybe not as high as you expect. Five and a half for 58 minutes is obviously very strong, but you might have thought maybe that he'd be doing more. Um, but even so, you can see here, 355 watts, 50k an hour. That's pretty aero. Like, the CDA must be low. Anyway, first climb coming up. This is the one I said, 1.5k at 8%, um, 23 kilometers an hour, pretty quick, 6.6 .6 watts per kilo. Again, sort of ramping here. It's pretty steep on this part, probably about 10% or so, 11%. Um, so this is really going to suit someone like Matteo Sobrero, who's a lot lighter than people Ganna. Um, this is the slightly shorter climb again, just 1.5k at 5%. But again, that's gonna suit someone who's lighter more than people Ganna. Um, and then again, a bit more flat, just settles back into a, a lot lower actually thing, only 334 watts. So I guess he's just trying to recover, really think, you know, I've got to absolutely launch this last climb. And maybe went a little bit too easy because we're gonna see the analysis um, in a bit afterwards down here. He then picked it up a lot. On this climb, again, about 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for two minutes. So you can see he's basically just riding 6.6 .6 on the climbs, more or less. Um, and then on the flat parts, doing sort of 330 to 350. But I think he had got too much left in the tank because here, 
where it's like minus 3%, he's doing 380 watts, and you think that doesn't really make sense when this part is slightly uphill, it's a slower speed, only 47.5, you should probably put more watts out here than towards the end here where it's downhill, and like, you know, you're not gonna make too much power, but I guess maybe you just paced it well, bit of negative split and just felt really strong at the end, and you can see the final sprint to the line was um, 500 watts, which was pretty decent. So there we go, Mateo Sobrero's power file, pretty outrageous to be honest, 47 kilometers an hour with that sort of elevation is very, very strong and impressive to see that he beat people. Ganna, here are the whole results, Sobrero, Affini, Catano, um, Ganna, Fellini, Rivi, Tiberi, Coglioni, Bevilacqua, and David Bice rounds out the top 10, uh, but yeah, big result from Nemlot. So anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.